In this video, I will show you how I painted this flamingo with watercolors. So let's get started. This is another project where I used a purple underpainting technique. I was inspired to try this after finding a book at the library, Building Brilliant Watercolors by Judy Treman. I talked about this book in my tulips video from a while back, which was my first attempt at the technique. You can cue the tulips video to play after this one by clicking up here on the top right, and I will also add a link to it and the book in the video description, as well as the copyright free reference photo from pixabay.com. So the technique that she explains is how she creates underpaintings using purple. Here I am using a mix of French Ultramarine and Alizarin by Daniel Smith. The concept is similar to an underpainting on an oil painting. You set your values, the lights and darks, at the beginning, and then as you work you focus on the colors building up intensity through layers of paint. The purple will disappear under the other colors you glaze over them and take on a more realistic shadow color. For this flamingo, I used masking fluid on some of the tips of the feathers on the back, and I am starting the purple layer wet and wet on the head and the neck. I made it darker where the reference photo had the deeper shadows. To be honest, I thought that I had made it way too purple, and I didn't think the flamingo would ever actually turn out to be pinkish orange at all, but I was really surprised that it mostly worked out. Once the purple layer was dry, I mixed up the first transparent layers using a mix of quinacridone coral and lemon yellow. I made sure I had enough to cover the neck and head, and I carefully re-wet the neck and added the orangey glaze onto the wet paper. Since I already did the work with the shadow in the purple stage, I didn't have to change the value of the orange from one area of the neck to the other, except that I did lift some pigment off of the lightest highlights on the right side. And this is where I'm lifting some of those highlights away. To do the body feathers, I did need to first separate some feathers out and give them shape and make it look like the deeper feathers are under heavier shadow, so I used the same purple mix as before, only a little more concentrated on these areas. I also painted these wet and wet.
To brighten up the head and neck, I re-wet the area again and glazed a watery opera pink, which is a beautiful neon color, which I also love to use when painting flowers. Over the dark body feathers, I used the same orangey mix that I first used on the neck. For the lighter feathers, I used the same mix, but it looks more vibrant and bright because of the lighter purple underneath. For many of these feathers, I painted orange at the base and transitioned them to opera pink at the tips. For the beak, I started with watery purple and peach, and for the darkest areas I used concentrated indigo.
I wanted to keep the background simple and abstract, and I chose purple and dark blue to add the most contrast with the vibrant pink and orange feathers. I did the background wet and wet in a couple different sections, and again I made sure that I mixed up enough of the color that I would need to complete the whole background. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more watercolor tips and tutorial videos. Also, please tell me in the comments if you think you will try a purple underpainting for a future watercolor project. Or if you have more questions about this technique that were not answered in the video, please ask away and I will be glad to help. Happy painting and I will see you next time.